WaveLab is a tool that can dramatically improve the quality of your audio. WaveLab originally began as a stereo wave editor and over time incorporated real-time effect processing, CD burning, DVD audio burning, batch processing, podcasting, comprehensive metering and analysis, spectral editing, and much, much more. WaveLab isn't just a plug-in that changes or alters the sound of your audio, but rather a full mastering and delivery solution. Let's take a quick look at some of the unique editing aspects of WaveLab 8. When we look at our main window here, it's broken down into key distinct areas that's optimized for a single screen display. So when I come here, I can see my transport across the bottom, my active wave window with an overview window above it, my metering section where you could have different types of meters that you could select in the tabs, my file browser where you could drag and drop audio files or double click to open, our master section which allows you to load up real-time plugins, set the volume levels, dithering settings, and also the ability to switch between eight different monitor sources, each with their own independent volume control. This allows you to switch between large, small, different types of speakers right there. Now, when we do editing, one of the most common things that you're going to be doing before any edit is zooming. The fluidity in the zooming of WaveLab is great. So if I wanted to zoom in down to the sample level, I could take my cursor, move it to the timeline, and just hold my left mouse button down and move the cursor up and down. So if I want to see just the very end of the file, if I wanted to see the beginning, if I want to see something in the middle, very easy to navigate. Trimming audio or cutting is very important as well. So I could select a section, right mouse click, and just hit cut. I could also just come here if I wanted to cut just a selection. If I want to take a portion and just come there and edit that and just drag that to a new location, I could also just take a portion of the audio file. If I want to create a new distinct separate audio file, I don't have to save as an export. I could just drag this onto my main toolbar here. And now that's a completely new audio file. So very fast, easy. Now some common problems that you may have when you're kind of doing wave editing is you may have samples that can often kind of peak a little bit. So let's say if we're looking at just visually, we see, okay, there's one and maybe like a snare drum here that's kind of peaking just a little bit that's up a bit louder than the other snare. So if we listen to it. So if I wanted to kind of tame that snare drum, I could zoom in on it. And I could do this in a couple different ways. I could just select just those particular frequencies. Um, I could go to my process menu and select gain. And then I could say, okay, I want this to be minus 3 dB. And I could apply that a couple times to kind of tame the snare. Uh, if I don't like that, I have my unlimited levels of undo, which is control or command Z. Another method of doing this, which is really cool, is to grab the pencil tool. And I could just draw in and change the waveform just like that. So I say, okay, I want to go from there to there. That way I could just draw the waveform. And if I wanted to do that for both the left channel and right channel, do that while holding down the shift key. And now if I wanted to listen to my tame snare, we can just kind of regulate audio. I know you're looking good. I'm in the just that easily. Now, sometimes you may have discrepancies between the volume between channels. So if I wanted to come here and we're looking at the audio, I could see that. My left channel is a little hotter than the right channel. So what I can do is I'm going to select this, just double click and I can select both channels and I'll go to my pan normalizer. So I could either analyze this by the peak level or what's probably more important is by the actual loudness. So now I hit apply and now the two channels, when we look at them, will be even. One other thing that we hear a lot about in audio is going to be phase relationships. Um, and this is kind of like, we could think of it how this kind of moves the air, how the air is vibrating uh, with the result of the audio. So if I actually see like one waveform, if we see here that where the one audio channel is going up, the other channel is going up as well. 
Now, when we have the phase reversed, and I could do this by going to my process menu and choosing invert phase, that as we do that, you notice that when the phase is inverted, that while one channel is going up, the other one is going down in the opposite direction. And this can cause the audio to kind of cancel out. So if we look at this, you can hear how the audio sounds a little weaker. But most importantly, we can determine if we have phase problems by looking at the phase scope. And if we see it very horizontal in nature, that's indicative of a phase problem. But if I wanted to undo or reverse the phase, so as soon as we see that, we see a lot more vertical and more spherical in nature. And I could also zoom in and out using my G and H keys. Another great handy shortcut. So very easy to fix phase issues. Now some other typical sample processing we're gonna have is fade ins and fade outs. So let's say I just want to trim this one more time. And I want to select the end of the file and I just want to do a fade out. So I'm gonna come here and if I have the beginning of the file or the end of the file, we can use the easy fade option. So if I'm at the end of the file, it'll just automatically do a linear fade out. Uh, if I want it to be more specific with the type of fade, I can come right here and I could choose whether I want to be linear, sinusoid, logarithmic, exponential for my different fades just that easily. Some other functions we can do from our process menu. We're gonna have a level normalizer as well as a loudness normalizer. Uh, right now there's a big movement to kind of go away from peak volume levels and actually use the R128 standard. So now there's actually a broadcast standard. And what we're able to do is to actually kind of set a particular loudness level uh, for the track. So even if it looks like the peaks are much different, uh, that doesn't necessarily always show you what the actual loudness or perceived loudness of the track is. So we can actually set that with your loudness normalizer. We're also going to have typical sample editing functions, very high quality, time stretching, pitch shifting, we could reverse the audio, remove DC offset, etc. Now a lot of people want to use WaveLab to enhance the sound of the audio. And this is done through running it through plugins. And I want to activate one setting in the bottom here, which we'll show you in just a couple minutes. And that is the option here. So we click on the settings to use plugin chain window. So I'm gonna activate that. And one of the first processes that a lot of people like to do in the mastering realm is what's called a multi-band compressor. So, and there's a great one that comes with WaveLab. So if I come here, Go to my Steinberg plugins to dynamics, and then we'll go to the multiband compressor. Uh, I made a little preset, I call it a big sound. Um, so once we do this, now what a multiband compressor allows you to do is to divide the frequency spectrum into distinct areas. So we have up to four areas, and each of these areas can have independent compression. So this way you might be able to make it brighter, but if it's a little harsh, you might be able to compress the, those bright frequencies. So if we play the audio, and we'll go ahead and solo the different frequency ranges. I'm in the neighborhood. Got some cheap wine. Let's have a good time. I never if we go ahead bypass. I'm on a stack around. But if you're missing me. Now, since I've activated that plugin chainer window, if I wanted to open another plugin, I could do it from the interface right at the top here. Let's open up a spatial plugin. So I'm gonna go to spatial and to a stereo enhancer. So now as we play the audio. I'm in the neighborhood. Now let's say I wanted to beef up the drums a little bit, give them a little more tax and go to my dynamics and open up the envelope shaper. Now if I choose to have the stereo enhancer come after the envelope shaper, I can just drag and drop. And instead of having multiple plugins open, I can just toggle back and forth between my master section plugins. So if I like those sounds, I can now bypass all the plugins right here in the lower left hand corner. So that's where we were before.
Now, one of the problems with using plugins is they could be deceptive because if there's a change of gain, loud will always sound better to our ears and to our brains. So we give you a function called the Smart Bypass. And what this is gonna allow you to do is to actually listen to the original audio. Hit the road, gonna rock, gonna roll. You can listen to the process audio. Then I could listen to the audio being processed, but with no gain increase. The original, processed, but at the same exact level. And again, processed with level correction, with the levels. So very, very handy to save you a lot of time to see exactly what's going on with the audio. Now, if I like this plugin chain, I could actually save it as a preset. So we'll call this a hit the road, the name of this song. We'll save. And if I actually go to my edit menu, I could choose to store the master section preset along with the audio file. So the next time I open up the WAV file, it'll automatically load up all of the plugins that we had set up and associate it with that file, which is a great, great time saver. If I wanted to embed the sound or render the sound of these plugins into the file, now what I want to do is to come right here, click on the render button, and I could create a new file if I wanted to process the whole file or just a selected region, uh, we could say, okay, we're gonna call this hit the road mix with effects, or I'll just say FX. And we're gonna create a new audio file right there. Um, so I could also have options for if I want to copy the markers over, if I want to bypass the master section on uh, when it finally plays back, I could upload it directly to SoundCloud now I hit OK. It's now rendered that file. And if we look at that, we can see our new file with all the processing and it automatically will bypass the master section versus our original file. So as you can see, working with the editing functions in WaveLab 8 can give you a dramatic improvement of your audio quality.